Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week and how was your weekend? I believe you saw the hand of God. See, especially in this season, God is seen to it. Not only that he provides for you, but that you see his provision. See, it's not enough to say God will provide for me. If you don't see that provision, it will make no sense to you. See, and that's the challenge with a lot of people. God have answered their prayers, but they have not seen the answers yet. But I pray that as we go on in this broadcast, the Spirit of God will begin to open your eyes to see the things that God have provided for you. Are you ready? Can we call for that daily bread right now? Join me in faith, not only to demand, but also to see the provision. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now and I see it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. As simple as that, you have made your request known to the Lord. You remember, I was supposed to be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, tell God what you want. Praise God. Tell him what you want. You know, sometimes we have this mentality of, how can you tell God what you want? Tell him, let his will be done in your life. No, no, no. He gives us the room to tell him what we want. But you see, sometimes we don't even understand what we want. But that doesn't stop him from listening to our request. And that's why prayer, the most important thing about prayer is submitting yourself to the Lord and submitting your mind to the Holy Spirit. I remember last week I was sharing along those lines and, and opening your heart, opening your mind up for the Holy Spirit to begin to impact on your mind. Praise God. Now I began to teach something in our fellowship recently and while i was talking to the lord about the what we're talking about on this daily broadcast the lord began to inspire in my heart that i should teach also on that praise god so turn your bibles with me to hebrews chapter 13 the book of hebrews chapter 13 Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews 13 and verse 5. It says, Let your conversation, or some other translation say conduct or manner of life, let your conversation be without covetousness. Now, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that, look, listen, listen, make sure, make sure your conversation which is your manner of life the way you live your life your conduct in life so the way you behave in life says let it be where or let it be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have it says watch your manner of living and be sure that it is without covetousness, meaning check it and be sure that you've been able to extract covetousness out of it. And then he says, relax, be content with the things that you have. Now, why is he saying be content, content, uh, content with what you have? Is he saying don't aspire for more? Is he saying no? You see, we are going to go into the the meaning of covetousness because you know many times people confuse covetousness with greed now when a man is covetous of course there'll be greed in his life but greediness doesn't necessarily mean covetousness is in in its entirety you see you need to know the difference a lot of people are covetous they don't even realize that they are covetous praise god and i trust the holy spirit that he's going to guide us through these teachings so now what is covetousness I think the perfect 
definition to give concerning covetousness is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Jesus speaking to his disciples. He made a very, very powerful statement here. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Now, understand the background. Let me read the background of this message. Verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, so one of the disciples, said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide inheritance with me. So, one of the disciples of Jesus, now we don't know if he's one of the 12 or the other disciples, but he is one of their company, one of the people that followed Jesus closely. So now he said, hey, master. So he, he has these squabbles with his brother and he felt Jesus would be able to intervene. And so he, he came to Jesus and says, please tell my brother that he should what? Divide the inheritance with me. So let's split this inheritance. Let me get my own portion, okay? And, and Jesus said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Now Jesus was speaking to his disciples. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to go into that business. See, now, now sometimes when you, when you read things like this, now we tell people, when you read the Bible, always don't just read it like one holy book that you cannot question or pry into its real meaning see a lot of people have that mentality so they don't get anything from god's word so when god is showing them things they don't see it because they are i mean <laughs> it's good now now imagine one of the disciples of jesus coming to him just like today you go to your pastor and say ah, pastor please tell my brother say come and intervene in this matter just let me tell my brother that he he should divide in here and then jesus said look man who has made me a judge or a divider over you so just said, i don't want to get into that business you see praise god and now he says mm. and he said to the man okay then he verse 15 says and he said to them now he took this matter up to the to, to all of them now he says and he said to them take heed and beware of covetousness now, the, the, the picture this man painted, or the, this passage paints, is this guy was not asking for what was not his. So, whatever, maybe their father left an inheritance for them, and the elder one maybe is holding on to it, and then he's just feeling, or maybe they were twins, you don't know, but he's just feeling, look, I mean, we, we, I need to know what's mine, and I need, you need to know what's yours. And, and Jesus said, hey, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses possesses a man's life does not consist let me read this from the old king james now and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Okay, so Jesus is saying, beware not to enter into covetousness. Now that's the same thing the writer of the book of Hebrews was saying to us. He said, let your manner of life be without covetousness. Watch it that there is no covetousness in your life, in the way you handle things, in the way you deal with people, in the way you deal with life affairs. Make sure there's no covetousness in it. So what's covetousness? Covetousness is the thinking that because of what you have, you are something. And also covetousness is the thinking that because you don't have something, you are nothing. Now, as, as we go on, uh, we're going to make it broader so you, you understand the full meaning of what covetousness is. So covetousness is not the desire to have what is not yours. No, even your own thing, you can be covetous. For example, this young man wasn't asking for what was not his. He was actually asking for what was legally his. See? But Jesus said, beware of covetousness. Meaning you are... Now, 
I, I think I like to explain it this way. When, when it says be aware of something, you know, you walk to a compound, maybe you're going to see a friend, and then you get to the gate and you see on the gate, beware of dogs. Now, what's that information telling you? The information is telling you that there are dogs in this place. So as you come in, take notes and don't get into their trouble. <laughs> That's what that information is giving to you. They wouldn't put beware of dogs if there are, if there are no dogs in that place. And most, like, most likely it's more than even one. So when he says beware of covetousness, he is telling you for sure there is the temptation of getting into covetousness. This happens to everybody. Now that's why I explained it in both ways. The, it's covetous to think that if you can get something or because you have something, you are made. It's also covetousness to think that because you don't have something, you are not made. See? Now, naturally, beginning of every year, everybody, oh, this is my year. This year I'm going to excel. This year I'm going to do this. This year I'm going to do that. And then some people have even allotted every month and the achievement that they are going to make every month. And so, now why do they do all those things? No matter how good it is, there is always the temptation to get into covetousness. That's why it says be aware of it. So this is not something we brush under the carpet. This is something we have to look squarely and begin to judge ourselves and be sure we are not walking in that path. Because he said in Hebrews, be sure that there is no covetousness in your way of living. Let your conduct, let your manner of life be without covetousness and be content with what you have. And Jesus is telling us now that a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. So you are not made because of what you have. And scriptures, uh, events that have happened in scriptures, even in real life, have proven that to be true. Uh, you remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. And he says, Master, what must I do to inherit life? Now, this man was rich. He was wealthy. And he asked Jesus this all-important question. What must I do to inherit life? So, though he was rich, he still felt that there was something more to life. He wanted something more. Not more money. He had a lot of money. But he, now because this guy was a good man and he, 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 he loved God. How do I know he loved God? You remember Jesus said to him, he said, you know the law, keep it and you'll be fine. And he was bold enough to tell Jesus that all these commandments I have kept from my youth. And the Bible said, Jesus beholding him, loved him. Jesus looked at him like, wow, great guy, wonderful guy. And then, now that's to tell you that this guy truly loved God. And this guy truly had to walk according to God's ways and according to God's principles. So he didn't become wealthy by cheating, stealing from anyone. No, he became wealthy by doing righteous work, okay? He got rich and wealthy by doing righteous work and then the hand of the Lord being upon him. Because if you walk righteously, the hand of God will rest upon you. Now, Jesus now said something very, very instructive to him. Jesus said, you lack one thing. Now remember, this guy said, um, I want life. What must I do so that I will have life? And Jesus said, you lack one thing. Because I've done all these commandments. And Jesus said, you lack one thing. He says, what is it? And Jesus didn't tell him what he lacked. Jesus simply told him what to do. Jesus said, hey, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and then come and follow me. And the Bible lets us know that this man walked away sad. Why? Because he had great possession. So the instruction Jesus gave to him was difficult. To carry out when he thought of it 
I mean, where am I going to start again? Now, that's something that can happen to anyone. Where am I going to start again? Wow. Sell every. Did he say sell half? Did he say everything? Yeah, everything. Not half. No, not half. Everything. Sell all that you have. Give to the point. This is sell it. Go and invest it in a bank. Maybe those things are a distraction to you. Go and invest it in a bank or go and invest it in something. And then come and follow me. No, he says sell give to the poor meaning come to level zero make yourself level zero that's what jesus said to him and he walked away sad why did he walk away sad covetousness you see probably he was not even aware that he was covetous now he god had blessed him but you see the his attitude his response to what jesus said to him just proved that there was covetousness in his heart now here is a man that have grown big and had so much possessions okay and now he's realizing that truly his life was depending on those things how many of god's children that their life depend on their jobs their life depends on the savings that they have stashed up somewhere. How many of God's people just believe that, ah, with, with what I have, I'm made? You know, sometimes they say, I'll never suffer again in my life. Why are you saying that? Not because of what God has said to them, but they practically are looking at things that they have fixed for their lives. Hey! What if Jesus speaks to you tomorrow like he spoke to that rich young ruler? He said, go clear out everything and give to the poor or give to anybody. What happens to your life? Now that's when your heart will be checked and that's when you might just realize that, come now, there's covetousness in my heart. Yeah. So why is covetousness bad? You see, Number one, it's wrong to think that because of what you have, because of what you have possessed, because of what you have gathered, your life is made. It's wrong to think that way. Now, the fact that that is not the truth about life makes it wrong. It's a false foundation to build your life on. There are people who feel that their lives for many generations is secured. But who said so? What if, yes, maybe you're able to hand over to the next generation. What if the next generation squanders everything? And I mean everything. Things like that have happened. Maybe if you think well around you, you would have seen such a thing happen. Where a, 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 a parent, you know, or, 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 or parents leave possessions for their children but then it didn't take long before the children start messing around selling off everything even sometimes even parents that are alive they they do away with every i mean the children do away with everything and their parents that were once rich even while alive turn to paupers there are children who have destroyed things like that and guess what they will say i am finished have you heard people talk like that before an event happened in their lives they lost something and guess what their response is i am dead i am finished why are you saying you are finished because you lost the job because you lost the business because you lost an account or maybe hackers got into your account whatever happened to you that statement in response to that situation completely shows that there is covetousness in your heart. And that's exactly what Jesus was talking about. That's exactly what the writer of Hebrews was talking about. He says, beware, let your conduct be without this thing. Check your heart, check your way of operation. Be sure covetousness is not there. Why? Because this truly affects the rain that God is talking about. This truly affects the blessing that God releases upon our life. It sure does.
And you see, I'm, I'm bringing all these thoughts to you because of what God has said. He says, I'm sending the rain. And if, if we don't prepare properly, you will not see the manifestation of the rain in your life, even though God sends it. So, so please pay attention to these things, meditate on these things, and let the Spirit of God help you. Because my time is up. Praise God. I pray for you right now. Lord, it is because of your love and care that you're bringing us your truth. So I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Let your grace rest on them and open their understanding to behold these things and live their lives accordingly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.